Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, this video, I'm going to be answering question number two from the January 2021 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P3 Edexcel paper. And this question number two is all about transformations of graphs. So here we have a graph, figure one, which shows the sketch of the curve with the equation y equals f of x, where x is a member of the real numbers, and f of x is a polynomial. The curve passes through the origin and touches the x-axis at the point 3, 0. There is a maximum turning point at 1, 2 and a minimum turning point at 3, 0. On separate diagrams, sketch the curve with equation number 1, 3 times f of 2x and number 2, f minus 1, x minus 1. On each sketch, show clearly the coordinates of the point where the curve crosses the y-axis and any maximum or minimum turning points. Okay, so we've got to do these transformations or perform these transformations upon this curve. We don't have the equation of the curve, but we have some key points which are the place where it crosses the y-axis, the turning point which is the maximum and the minimum. Okay, and also, I guess, the point where it touches the x-axis. So now what we've got to do is get on with the question. So I've got it ready on the next page. So here we have um, a grid ready drawn. I've got a copy of the uh, <coughs> function, that's the original function here, so that I can see what I'm doing. And we've got to start off with 3 times f of 2x. Now, basically what this is, is this is both of these involve multiplication. The one inside the function involves multiplication, and the one outside the function involves multiplication. So they're both something to do with the stretch. Okay, or well, both of them are to do with stretch. Now, what's inside the function always causes a horizontal effect on the transformation. What's outside the function, so this 2 is multiplying inside the function, it's going to have some horizontal kind of um, effect on the transformation. And what's outside the function is always going to have some vertical effect on the transformation. It's going to cause some vertical. So this will call a vertical stretch, and this will cause a horizontal stretch. Okay, so what's inside the function affects the x-coordinate and not the y-coordinate. And what's outside the function affects the y-coordinate and not the x-coordinate. Okay, now in general, it's always wiser to start with what's inside the function. So I'm going to start with the f of 2x part. So I'm going to start with, I've got my coordinates. I've got 0, 0. I've got 3, 0. Those are the three points that I have. And I have 1, 2. And I'm going to start off with firstly f of 2x because that's what's inside the function. I'll start with that one. So what happens here is we have these will, these will only affect the x coordinates. So in this first for the first thing here, the the y coordinates won't change. They'll still still be exactly as they are. The only thing that will change will be the x coordinates. Okay. So this two inside the function will affect the x coordinate, but when it's inside the function, it kind of does the opposite. So uh, uh, if you multiply, if, if it's f of 2x, it, it causes a horizontal stretch of factor of the reciprocal of that number. So it's going to be multiplying the x-coordinate by a half. It causes a, a horizontal stretch of factor a half, the reciprocal of this number that's multiplying. So I have to multiply all the x-coordinates by a half. Well, that won't change this. Of course, it's on the, it's on the uh, axis, so it's not going to cause any, it's not going to change from there. There, this, this point 3 is going to become 3 times a half, which is 1.5. Okay, so this point 3, 0 is going to get closer to the x-axis by a factor of a half. So it's going to become 1.5. And same with this, this 1 is going to become 0 0.5. It's going to get closer to the x-axis by a factor of a half as well. Okay, so that's the effect of 3 f of, of f of 2x. Now I'm going to do 3 times f of 2x. So this part's already done. So now we've got this three, three part to, to deal with. So this three part, which is multiplying outside the function, is also going to cause a stretch. But this time it's going to be a vertical stretch. So we have to multiply the y coordinates by three, the same number that's multiplying. For the, for the ones that's outside the function, you multiply by the same number that you see. If it's three, you multiply by three. If it's inside the function, whatever number's multiplying the x, you multiply the x coordinates by its reciprocal. So that's why I multiply these by a half. Outside the function, whatever you see outside, you multiply by the same thing. But you only multiply the 
y coordinates. So the x coordinates here will remain as they were after the first thing that I dealt with. So those won't change. Okay, but the y coordinates will be multiplied by 3. Now for this particular coordinate, it won't change anything. 3 times 0 is 0. Here you got, again, 3 times 0 is 0. But for the last one, you're going to have 3 times 2, which is 6. So these are the points. So you can see that this is where it crosses the y-axis. This is the maximum point, And this is the minimum point. Okay, so what's going to happen here? is basically it's going to have the same type of shape but it's going to be kind of squashed in a bit so i'm just going to draw something that so basically it's going to turn somewhere up here come down and turn back up again it's going to have the same shape as this okay so i can just do something like this same kind of basic um things going to happen in fact i made it a bit too wide let me make it a bit thinner so that just to show it's been squashed up a bit Something like that. Okay, I haven't done it so well, but it's okay. Let me just move it along so that goes through the origin and put it down a bit so it touches the x-axis. It's just fiddling about a bit. I know you can't do that in the exam, but anyway. So there we have the graph. Don't let it go back on itself. It'll be too vertical. So it's going to go through the origin. And this is going to be the point 1.50. Okay, it's very important that you label these points correctly. And this is the point... Um, 0 0.5 and 6 0 0.5 and 6 so it's it's kind of like stretched upwards and out and stretch it's kind of stretched outwards like this and also inwards like this okay been squashed okay so as long as you have these points marked properly that's fine you get the same basic shape um, but have these marks points very clearly okay these points marked very clearly sorry Okay, so that's part one. Now for part two, it's f of minus x minus one. So the same thing applies. In this case, however, the minus x will cause the x coordinates to be multiplied by minus one because the reciprocal of minus one is minus one. So basically, any x coordinate that was positive is now going to become negative. So it's a reflection in the y axis. So I'm going to draw the y axis on this side now because. It's going to, these points are going to be on the opposite side now because all the x coordinates are going to be multiplied by minus 1. Okay, so the, the y axis is going to move, I mean, the, you know, I need more space on that side of the x axis. So this is the y axis, this is the x axis. Now let me just do the same thing as I did before. Let's start first with what's inside the function. So f minus x first. We have the point starting off with the point um, 0, 0. And then we have the point 3, 0. And then we have the point 1, 2. And let's see what happens. f minus 1x means you multiply the x coordinate by the reciprocal of minus 1, which is minus 1, which won't change this point. Here we, we multiply the x coordinate by minus 1, which is going to give you minus 3, 0. And here you're going to have minus 1, 2. So all the x coordinates are multiplied by minus 1. Or you can say the reciprocal of minus 1, which is minus 1. And then secondly, what happens is f minus x minus 1. That means here, this is now something that you're adding to the whole function. And if it's added to the whole function, it's like you have to, uh, you know, do that same operation to the y coordinate. So here what's going to happen is I have to take away 1 from the y coordinates. It's like a translation of one unit down. Okay, if it was inside the function when you add or subtract something, then it will be a translation which will be horizontal. Okay. But here it's going to be a vertical transform, translation. So you have to take away 1 from all the y coordinates. So the x coordinates we've already sorted out with this part. So they're already done now. So the y coordinates now are all going to go down by 1. So this time this origin is going to go to minus 1. 0 minus 1. This is going to become minus 3 minus 1. And this is going to become minus 1 and 1. Everything reduced by 1. All the x coordinates are reduced by 1. So now I know all my points. I know one of them is 0 minus 1. The other one is minus 3 minus 1. So basically what's going to happen here, if you imagine this graph, let me just draw it like this first, roughly, just so I get the, the right shape. It's a bit messed up, but anyway, it shouldn't go like back like that. Okay, just, just to give you an idea, if I take this, this graph, and what's happening here is the first thing that's happening is being reflected in 
the um, y-axis. Okay, so the well, actually, actually looks like this. It's been reflected in the y-axis. It looks like this in the beginning. That's three zero. So everything kind of like all the x coordinates, they swap over to the negative side. So this, as you can see first, um, you know, you get the x one becomes minus one two. So it's minus one two. And it becomes three zero. So it, this is what it looks like. It's a reflection in the y-axis. So I'll just show you what it looks like if I flip it left right. It will look something like this. Okay, it will look something like this. Okay, that's what first happens. So you see the zero zero state as it was, and the um, you know the one two became minus one two, and the three zero became minus three zero. And then secondly, what happens is the whole thing shifts down by one unit okay so you can see here that this now becomes zero minus one this this point this other turning point becomes one minus one and one and the other turning point which was before one two now becomes minus one uh, sorry mi minus three and minus one this minus three and minus one Okay, so that's what happens to the curve when it's been gone through this. Okay, so actually I've I've drawn it pretty decently by doing that, so I can just just use the same sketch. Okay, so it's a bit of a cheat because I just copied it from there, but that's fine. So I'm going to write down these points a bit clearly, a bit more clearer. Okay, so this is this is the point zero minus one. So I'll write it as a coordinate. This is the point here where they said they said the point where the curve crosses the y-axis. That's zero minus one they didn't ask us for the points where the curve crosses the x-axis we can't actually find them without knowing more information about the equation of the curve but we have to also show any maximum or minimum turning point so this this turn this point now um, is the maximum okay which is now um, become uh, minus one one and the minimum that was three zero is now the minimum on this one which is minus three minus one Okay, so those are the points that we have to mark and show. And there is this, the, the sketch of the curve. I hope that was clear. Okay, this is a transformations topic. And, um, you know, you just take, just remember what's inside the function affects the x coordinates and you do the opposite. If it's, you know, like, you can make it clearer here. If it's, it says 2x, you multiply them by a half. If it's outside the function, it affects only the y coordinate. So therefore, you, you do the same thing as it says. So three times, you multiply the y coordinates by three, and so on. Okay, so there's the answer to that question. Number two, um, other questions from this paper of um, June, sorry, January 2021. You'll find in the playlist when I've finished them over here. Other questions from the topic of transformations from P3, you'll find in this, topic, in this uh, playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And at the top of the page, you'll find a card that takes you to another past paper you might want to watch from P3. Uh, thank you for watching.